the Glad Scientist. Today we have a new guest, Shakita, named after Josephine Baker's cheetah. Shakita. Mary has gone to sleep, but I went to read this story, which is a biography of George, the life of George Washington Carver. It's called A Wheat is a Flower. For beginners to learn how to read, this is the front cover, this is the back cover, and this is the spine. So now I'm going to read you A Wheat is a Flower. When George Washington Carver was born, he had many things against him. He was sick. He was a sick, weak little baby. His father had just died, and his mother was left alone to care for him. And for his brother James. And even worse, he was the son of slaves. It said, the book says slaves, but we would like to use enslaved people because our ancestors were enslaved people or people. And even worse, he was the son of enslaved people. There was no hope for the future, but George Washington Carver was no ordinary man. He was a man who turned evil into good, that's good, despair into hope, and hatred into love. He was a man who devoted his whole life to helping his people and the world around him. This is his story. George Washington Carver was born in Mississippi in 1860, more than a hundred years ago. It was a terrible time. Mean men rode silently in the night kidnapping slaves from their owners, and harming those who tried to stop them. One night, a band of these men rode up to the farm of Moses Carver, who owned George and his mother, Mary. Everyone ran in fear, but before Mary could hide her baby, the men came and snatched them both and rode away into the in the darkness. Moses Carver sent a man to look for them. Mary was never found, and that's not good. That's really sad. But in a few days, the man returned with a small bundle wrapped in his coat and tied to the back of his, of his saddle. It was the baby George. Moses and his wife Susan cared for Mary's children. George remained small and weak, but as he grew, they saw he was an unusual child. He wanted to know about everything around him. He asked about the rain, the flowers, the insects, everything like me. Like, I always ask questions, like everything natural, everything man-made, everything. He asked questions the carvers couldn't even answer. That's so cool. So he has to answer the questions by himself. When he was very young, George kept a garden where he spent hours each day caring for his plants. If they weren't growing well, he found out why. Soon, they were healthy and blooming. In winter, he covered his plants to protect them. In spring, he planted new seeds. George looked after each plant as though it was the only one in his garden, like he only had one garden. Neighbors began to ask George's advice about their plants, and soon he was known as the plant doctor. And that's why we're eating peanuts and stuff. As time went on, George wondered about more and more, a thousand more things. He wanted to learn and yearned 
So go to school. That means want it, like really, really want to really bad. In the meantime, the slaves had been free, but schools nearby were not open to blacks. So, when he was ten, George left his brother, his garden, and the Carver farm, and went off to find the answers to his own questions. That's very brave of George. What do you think? Wherever George Washington Carver found schools, he stayed. He worked for people to earn his sleep. He scrubbed their clothes, their floors, washed their clothes, and baked their bread. Whatever George did, he did well. Even the smallest chore was important to him. So that day he was washing his hands. That's still important to him. Some people took George as their, and as their son. First, he stayed with Maria and Auntie Watkins. Watkins, who were like parents to him. Then he moved to Kansas and lived with Aunt Lucy and Uncle Seymour. They too loved this quiet boy who was so willing to help. So I guess this is Aunt Lucy and that's Uncle Seymour. And George was a very quiet boy. I wonder why. George worked hard for many years, always trying to save enough money for college. Other boys who had parents to help them were able to enter college much sooner than George. He was 30 before he had saved enough. Still, it was not that simple. Not all colleges were at Mint Blacks. Even if they had the money to pay, George was discouraged. He moved to Iowa and found a, car, a college which was glad to have a black student. Yay! At college, George continued to work. Choo -choo -choo -choo. He opened a laundry where he washed his schoolmates' clothes. Wow, that's really nice of George. And he, and he continued to learn. His teachers and his friends soon realized that this earnest young man was bursting with talents. He played the piano, he sang beautifully, and he was an outstanding painter. I mean, outstanding. In fact, for a time he thought of becoming an artist. See, he's painting a flower. Because I love art, too. I think I like George Washington Carver. Shakita, do you like art? Meow, meow. Take that as a yes. We love art. I think I love George Washington Carver. He's my favorite scientist. But the more George thought of it, what he wanted to do, the more he wanted to help his people. And he remembered that his neighbors used to call him the plant doctor. He had never forgotten his love for plants. And in all years, and in all the years, he had wondered, he always had something growing in his room. Hmm. Like, let's say I was George Washington Carver, and I was dreaming like a garden was growing in my room. But that can't happen. Dirt is not in my room. So George Washington Carver chose to study agriculture. He learned about plants, flowers, all different kinds of plants and flowers in soil. Another word for soil is dirt. He learned the names of the weeds. Even they were important to him. He often said, a weed is a flower growing in the wrong place. He still asked questions. If no person or book could answer them, he found the answers himself. Like I will when I grow up. My mom always tells me to use context clues with my brain. He experimented with his own plants and found secrets no one else knew. 
not even his friends and his parents. When George finished college, he began to teach. He began to teach. He was asked to go to Alabama, where a college for blacks needed his talent. Like they really needed it. It was there at Tuskegee Institute that George Washington Carver made his life. In Alabama, Professor Carver taught his students and the poor black farmers who earned their lives hood from the soil. He taught them how to make their crops grow better. That's really nice of George. He's really my favorite. Oh, and those are our ancestors, not having a good time working for the white people. Most of their, most of the farmers raise cotton. Mm -mm -mm -mm. But sometimes the crops are destroyed by rain or insects, and the farmers couldn't earn enough to eat. Professor Carver told them to plant other things as well. Sweet potatoes and peanuts were good crops. They were easy to grow. He said that raising only cotton harmed soil. It was better if different crops were planted each year. The farmers did not want to listen, mm -mm -mm, and this is their consequence. They were afraid to plant peanuts and sweet potatoes. They were sure that no one would buy them. Mm. So because of that, this is a consequence. The Professor Carver had experimented in his laboratory. He had found that many things could be made from the sweet potato. He made soap, coffee, and starch, and things like that that we use now. He made more than a hundred things from the sweet potato. But what about the peanut? And even though people in those days called peanuts monkey food, monkey food, Professor Carver said they were good for people too. Besides, he found that still more things could be made from the peanut. But why did they call it monkey food? Monkeys eat bananas. Peanuts. Besides, he found that still more things could be made from the peanut. Paper eggs, shaving cream, sauces, Lionel Liam, shampoo, and even milk. In fact, he made 300 different products from the peanut. I don't believe that. I believe he made more. Once when important guests were expected at Tuskegee, Dr. Carver chose the menu. The guests sat around the table and enjoyed a meal of soup. <sighs> Creamed malt chicken and bread, salad, coffee, candy, cake, and ice cream. That's a lot of food for a little tummy like me. Imagine they're surprised when they learn that the meal was made entirely from peanuts. So all of this meal that they're eating is made from peanuts. Slowly, the farmers listen to George, Washington Carver. They planted peanuts and sweet potatoes. Before they knew it, these became two of the most important crops in Alabama. But we're going to understate some countries, maybe planets. Soon, the whole country knew about Dr. Carver and the great things he was doing. He was honored by presidents and other important people. Every day, his mailbox boogled with letters from farmers and scientists who wanted his advice. He was offered great sums of money. Like, what he turned down. Money is at the bottom of the schedule. Money was not important to him, only work. He did not even bother to cash many of the checks he received. Mm -mm. That's good, George Washington Carver, or GWC. Throughout his life, George Washington Carver asked nothing of others. Mm -mm. He sought only to help. 
He lived alone and tended to his own needs. He washed his clothes and patched them too. He used the soap he made and ate the food he grew. Now that's a, I think he's a grandfather and he did lots of things. Let's just see what happened now. Dr. Carver was asked to speak in many parts of the world where he did not leave Stevie often. He had things to do. He continued to paint. He worked in his greenhouse and in his laboratory, where he discovered many things. He discovered the dyes could be made from plants in colors from Alabama. Like, all plants in colors. Clay. I love clay. Even when he was over 80 and close to death, Dr. Carver kept working. He would never give up. Even if it's really, really hard, you still never give up. Night after night, while the rest of the town lay asleep, a light still shone in his window. Like he's very old and he didn't even go to sleep one night. Can you believe that? God must have created him and created him really special. The baby born with no hope for the future grew into one of the great scientists of his country, George Washington Cropper, or as we like to call him, GWC, with his goodness and devotion, helps not only with his not only his own people, but all peoples of the world. So Shakira, did you like that book? The end. Did you like that book? That means she liked it and she is going to give it a thumbs up because I really love this book and it taught us not to care about money and um, well, <laughs> to care about money too, but like get money so we can work for money. So what do you guys think? Just send me on your email and please subscribe to me, me and Mary, Mary the Glad Scientist. Bye bye. Thank you.